How much responsibility do you feel that you have, particularly to go out to the alt-right, who, as you say, some of them have enjoyed your work, and say, no, I'm, not one of, I'm not one of you guys, I'm not with you guys. They haven't enjoyed my work. I've definitely read bits on the internet. Read more. Do you think a trans mm. woman is a real... Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jessica. My name is Cece. And in today's video, we're going to be reacting to Jordan Peterson's most savage comebacks highlights and completion. I'm so excited for this video because we love Jordan Peterson on this channel. If you guys are a fan of some of our videos, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Without further ado, are you ready to check out the video? Let's get started. How much responsibility do you feel that you have, particularly guys the alt-right, who, as you say, some of them have enjoyed your work and say, no, I'm, not one of, I'm not one of you guys, I'm not with you guys. They haven't enjoyed my work. I've definitely read bits on the internet. Read more. Do you think a trans woman is a real woman? I don't really like the way those questions are formulated. You know, I don't know what that means. What do you mean a real woman? Well, she I'm asking you, in your mind, you know, it depends what you think a real woman is, but do you think a trans woman is a woman? No. Why not? Because I think that women are capable, generally speaking, of having babies and they have female genitalia and they have an XX chromosome. and. And I think the biological markers are relevant. I'm interested in... That's a good one. I really like this one. And I, I like that, like, he, like, always emphasizes, like, I, I don't like the way you're, you're phrasing that question, mm -hmm. you know? Like, what do you mean by that? Because mm -hmm. there's always an agenda behind it. Like, yeah. she's obviously trying to, like, imply something. Um, but, yeah, I have a question for you. Okay. Do you think trans women are real women? No. <laughs> like Peterson <Why>? said, <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah. Okay, that's so, just with the period. Uh -huh. They are not. They're not real women. No. So what do you think? Say somebody is trans, like, and they get go through the surgeries, whatever it is. Would you like call them by what you what they appear to be? I call them by their name. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think I would call them by like what they appear to be. Because if you're presenting yourself and you like look like a woman, you went through the surgeries, whatever. I'm not gonna tell like down the street, you know. Yeah. I'm probably not gonna be like close best friends with like a random trans person you know mm -hmm. what i mean but i agree with you i think that's a smart way to go about it just calling them by their mm -hmm. name people being able to have different choices and um and having equality of outcome aha well so the overwhelming proportion of people who are in prisons are male now do you want to equalize that just out of curiosity I what about bricklayers they're 99 percent male and the f and we've got about three quarters of, of the population now in universities mm -hmm. in the humanities and social sciences are female. Yeah. Are we going to equalize that? And well, men men work more longer hours. They work more dangerous jobs. They're more likely to move. They're more likely to work outside. They're more likely to participate in jobs in the STEM fields that are scalable. They make more money for those reasons. And that's all hidden under the idea that the reason that men and women make different amounts of money is because of their gender. It's a very simplistic analysis. He ate. Eight. That, that was that was perfect. The woman didn't have a response, and it's good she didn't cut, so he could just. I know you, like, it's yeah. kind of funny, like mm -hmm. you know when somebody interrupts mm -hmm. you and like you didn't actually have a thought. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, I just think, keep. Quiet. I think he saved her in yeah. a sense. She didn't know what she was gonna say. Why are you against the use of alternate pronouns? I'm not, I'm against the use of of le legislation to determine what words are that myself and other people are required to utter. But would you use alternate pronouns if a student asked you to? I think I've made my position on that clear already. Well, perhaps not to our audience at home who are just being introduced to this. Would you use alternate no. pronouns? And why not? I, because I don't believe that other people have the right to determine what language I use, especially when it's backed by punitive legislation. And when the words that are being required are the constructions, there are artificial constructions of people I regard as radical ideologues whose viewpoint I do not share. Until women go fully. And, and like, I, I actually watched this interview. So like the people watching, like if you get some context from it, um, basically like in Canada, they passed this legislation where like um, university professors mm -hmm. had to call like certain, all the students by whatever pronouns they decided. Mm -hmm. And he just thought that it shouldn't have came to that. Mm -hmm. You know, like they shouldn't be able to dictate what you're saying. Yeah. But that's basically the context of that video a little bit. Right. And he ate with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think it, like the 
I don't think the professors are like disrespecting the students mm -hmm. in that way either. Yeah. Just if we're going by calling them by your name, just like you call your teacher, but teacher or professor or mm -hmm. their name, like it should just be like that. But mm -hmm. for them to pick, I feel like it's not fair to professors either. Yeah. Because you have to do that for so many different students, and if yeah. they change it the next day, or like it's just it's so confusing. Yes, I say I'm I'm a I'm a she her today. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow I identify as a friend. Yeah. So now what? <laughs> You know what? Full legal rights. They could own property for themselves. They could work. Essentially, they were owned. They were You're first attributing their owned lowest, by their fathers and then by their husbands. Status to the domination by men. Yeah. You already said that you thought that what emancipated women primarily in the 20th century was technological revolution. No, not okay, primarily, so but that's it? one of two. I think that's it's two not things. primarily, eh? No, you I don't th think the pill was a primary force in the emancipation of women. I think or the invention of, or, of tampons, let's say, or the, or the provision of proper sanitary... Uh, facilities, toilets, and that sort of thing. You're, you're, you're thinking instead it was the action of courageous feminists in the 1920s that produced a social revolution that overthrew the patriarchy. That's your theory. Yeah, I That's think. That's a foolish theory. That's actually, listen, I'm sorry, I've watched a lot of these. I actually watched this debate twice. I love this debate so much, and I feel like she, like, you know how, like, when you're debating with somebody, you kind of have to stick to your point, mm -hmm. even if they make sense? Mm -hmm. That's what she's doing. Mm. Like, I, and it's something that I never thought about, like, especially back then when women didn't have, like, let's say all the rights that men have, mm -hmm. men had at the time. Um, like, you wouldn't have thought about, like, sanitary issues. Like, women get periods every month. Mm -hmm. That could be a problem in the workplace. <laughs> That's pure narcissism at work, by the way. You know, to hijack, a, to hijack an event like this that other people put time and effort into and to use the, their, their civility of the crowd and the civility of the organizers as an excuse to blatantly yell out your ill-informed opinions is no way to conduct a civil dialogue. It's absolutely appalling. The people who do that should be embarrassed. My idea of the patriarchy is a, a system of male dominance of society. Yeah, but that's not my sense of the patriarchy. So what's, what's yours? Well, in what sense is our society male-dominated? Uh, the fact that the vast majority of wealth is owned by men, the vast majority of capital and is owned by men. Women do more unpaid it's a labor. Very, very tiny proportion of men and a huge proportion of people who are seriously disaffected are men. Most people in prison are men. Most people who are uh, on the street are men. Most victims of violent crime are men. Most people who commit suicide are men. Uh, most men, most people who die in wars are men. People who do worse in school are men. It's like Where's the dominance here precisely? What you're doing is you're taking a tiny substrata of hyper successful men and using that to represent the entire structure of, the, of Western society. There's nothing about that that's vaguely appropriate. But I could say equally well that most rape victims are women. You know, terrible things happen to people of both sexes. And you could say that with, with, with perfect utility, but that doesn't provide any evidence for the existence of a male dominated patriarchy. I would I'm that sorry. one thing. He hates it. Oh. You're gonna use that one thing for everything he just listed. Be like, but like more women get raped. <laughs> At his point, oh my gosh, like who would think to say that? Who? Would, I think that's the interview that made him famous. One, like we're we're kind of like indoctrinated in a sense in our society um, with different different um, different ideas about what what um, white men are, are capable of and what they're doing to our society and how they're terrible people. And like he comes along, and he says, well, these men are actually. Uh, disaffected like they're they're actually struggling a lot of them it, it's a small percentage that are actually successful mm -hmm. and you're like oh my gosh like that's I didn't know that was true she, she generalizes a lot say that anybody with more than a cursory knowledge of 20th century history who dares to claim simultaneously that they have compassion for the downtrodden and that they're Marxists are revealing either their an ignorance of history that's so astounding that it's actually a form of miracle or a kind of <laughs> or a kind of malevolence that's so reprehensible that it's almost unspeakable because we already ran the 
equity experiment over the course of the 20th century. And we already know what the, the Marxist doctrines have done for oppressed people all around the world. And the answer to that mostly was imprison them, enslave them, work them to death, or execute them. And as far as I can tell, that's not precisely commensurate with any message of compassion. Sorry, tried that, didn't work. We got 100 million corpses to prove it. And that's plenty for me. And if it's not enough for you, well, then you should do some serious thinking either about your historical knowledge or about your moral character. Uh, question uh, for Professor Peterson. Um, why do you feel that someone's personal gender identity and pronouns infringes your free speech? Can one not also argue based on your interpretation that professors can use racial slurs in their classroom um, and the, that the inability to do so would violate their freedom of speech? There's a difference between saying that there's something you can't say and saying that there are things that you have to say. And I regard these made up pronouns, all of them, as the neologisms of radical PC authoritarians. Do you understand that? And I don't, I'm not a fan of that sort of person. And the reason I'm not a fan of that sort of person is because I've done my homework. I've read everything I can get my hands on in the development of authoritarian political systems, and I know the literature inside out and backwards. And I am not going to be a mouthpiece for language that I detest. And that's that. Everything. I think you have no idea how pernicious and dangerous it is. Well, no, you I know, don't. I really don't. Go on. Throughout history, have fundamentally cooperated to push back against the absolute catastrophe of existence, a terrible death rate, the, the probability of chronic starvation, early death, disease, the difficulty of raising children, with all the death that was associated with that, and to look backwards in time and say, well, basically, what happened was men took the upper hand and persecuted women in this tyrannical patriarchy is it's absolutely dreadful misreading of history. It's a terrible thing to teach young women and it's a horrible thing to inflict upon men. When the Marxists say, well, that wasn't real Marxism, what it really means, and I've thought about this for a long time, it's the most arrogant possible statement anyone could ever make. It means if I would have been in Stalin's position, I would have ushered in the damn utopia instead, that, instead of the genocidal massacres because I understand the doctrine of Marxism and everything about me is good. It's like, well, think again, sunshine. You don't understand it. You don't understand it. And you're not that good. And if the power was in your hands, assuming you had the competence, which you don't, you wouldn't have done any better, and even if you had, there would have been someone else waiting right behind you to shoot you the first time you actually tried to do anything good. And that's what happened to all the old guard who ran the damn revolution. Stalin rounded them all up and shot them, along with their families and millions of other people. So even if you do happen to be that avatar of moral purity that you claim implicitly, the probability that you'd get to act out your goodness in relationship to those possessed by your ideology is zero. Is being sensitive to offence such a problem though? Like we would have previously called that manners. It's a terrible problem. So imagine, you know, imagine you, okay, so the rule is you can't offend anyone, all right? Let's say you're speaking to one person, I can't offend you. All right, fair enough. What if I'm speaking to 10 people? Do I get to offend one in 10? How about one in 100? How about one in 1,000? You're going to come out on stage and you're going to say something important about something vital and you're not going to offend one person in a thousand? Well, you can't say anything about anything important ever without offending probably the person you're talking to. Important speech about important issues, especially contentious issues, is instantly offensive. Wow. Oh, wow. That was, I think that was really, really good. Honestly, it made me want to go back and like watch some of those um, uh, uh, lectures and some of the um, debates that he's done with some of these like interviewers or whatever, because I remember watching them and just like having a whole new perspective on, on like feminism and um, male patriarchy. It just, it just gives you a different I, it gives you different ideas to juggle and it picks at your brain a little bit. Um, but yeah, I definitely recommend everyone watch Jordan Peterson. I don't think he's the Nazi that every single person makes him out. Well, not every single person. A lot of like leftists, radical leftists make him out to be. What are your thoughts? I, Is this mine? That's yeah. Not mine. It's not. No? It's heavy. Mine's like... Oh yeah, yours was in the bag. Um, mine... 
or did I get froze it? Okay, this was what I was going to say. I liked like looking back at everything. He was speaking with such passion. You know, you can tell like this is like they're trying to pick at him, but he's like taking it super seriously. And I feel like they're trying to get him to like break out of character or say something like everything he's saying is straight facts. Everything he's saying is well, like he like it's well, like he thinks through it so like articulately. Like it's just like yeah. he just. 100% so smart. I think like uh, and I feel like why a lot of men are like drawn to him so much is because um he he words things in the way that they would want to word it mm -hmm. but he does it so efficiently mm -hmm. and like in a way that's like easy to understand as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? But and I that's the same reason why I feel like a lot of people are drawn to like the different, you know, creators and things like the it's it's you you see somebody and you're like oh this person's really cool because they can express how i feel um better than i can you know yeah. so it's like easy it's like oh i'm drawn to them i want to watch that you mm -hmm. know yeah thank you guys so much for watching this video make sure you guys follow cc on her social medias follow me on my social medias i will link them all below i love you guys thank you guys so much for 4000 subscribers we are on our way to 10000 subscribers i will Period. see you guys next time bye bye